Good Friday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, the host. As always, we are back with another great episode of the show. Um, this is a special episode of the show. Usually this is our end of the month political roundtable. But as I've said all this week, we have a special uh, celebration happening this weekend and we want to talk about it. That is Hanukkah. Hanukkah is this Sunday, and we are proud and honored to have my husband, my partner, my the love of my life on the show to talk about Hanukkah, but also the cutest of our dogs, Mr. Riri, might be making some noises as well during this. If you're not watching this and you're only listening to this, please go over to YouTube and you can see Riri, the... The, the, the mascot of the cross-border interview podcast. Um, but we are going to be talking about Hanukkah for the next few minutes, the next while, mm -hmm. because I, I, I like to learn. I like to learn a little bit about the world, and I like to learn a little bit about my husband, because we have been married for three years, and this is the first year where I've actually said, what does Hanukkah mean? So that is where we're going to start off. Uh, first off, thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. Now, to be to be the true, we actually have celebrated Hanukkah, but now this is the first year you want to learn about Hanukkah. That's true. That's we, true. We, we have we have always celebrated. We just haven't really talked about the meaning behind it. And last year we were celebrating, and I said to him, uh, "I want to have a Hanukkah special next year because I want to learn." And my husband being the person he is the great guy that he is he said well i'll oh. come on the show and i'll talk about it so here he is for the third time once per season Ooh. that's his max once per season that's all he'll do on the show but he's back to talk about hanukkah so i i want to start with the the million dollar question mm -hmm. what is hanukkah um well i guess there's the historical part of it Right, it's it's a celebration of the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem uh, during the uh, Greek occupation. The uh, temple was desecrated. There was uh, uh, a statue. I can't remember which of the gods. I think it would it would have been Zeus, I guess, that was put in the temple. And and, and in Judaism, the temple, of course, is a very sacred place. And being a strictly monotheistic. Um, uh, symbols and idols were not allowed inside. So um, the folks around when they saw this um, uh, statue go into the temple rebelled. They felt that it was a sacrilege. And so basically after a uh, an uprising, the temple was uh, uh, well rededicated. And when they went in to light the candles, they had enough oil for one night, but miraculously, it burned for eight nights. The number of uh, the number of uh, candles in the Hanukkiah, and uh, it was a miracle because it, it burned for eight nights, eight, eight days, until the, there was enough time to make new oil, new sacred oil for the lamp. And so since then, it's a celebration of miracles. It's also um, I guess a reminder of religious persecution, the rights uh, of of uh, people to worship, and um, I, I guess there's also like a, a more personal feeling to it, a more um, I guess story, and, and that is the tradition of lighting your Hanukkah right by a window. Is sharing the light, not just with your your family and your loved ones in your own home, but also bringing the light into the world into the world outside of your home so it, it's it's got a few different meanings and that's why we always light a hanukkiah by the window and one when we're having uh dinner um so I, anyone who's listened to this show and, and, oh, go ahead <laughs> i was gonna say um anyone out there who is <laughs> much more traditional it is not my intention to give the chief rabbi uh, uh an aneurysm listening to this okay this is what i've learned growing up what the stories and uh and and what i've i guess uh been passed down from tradition so anyone who's listened to the show knows that i try not to do a lot of research because i want to learn 
I want to learn as much as I can from the guest who's on the show. I will be honest, though, that I did do a little bit of a snoop and I did do a little Ooh. bit of research because I wanted to not look ignorant in front of my husband because he will hold it against me for the rest of my life. Um, it is my duty and my right, I believe. So, yes, let's go on. <laughs> so I want to talk about the king of Syria. Okay. Because the king of Syria, the uh, Antichrist, Antichrist? who is the, who led the, so this, this is where I want some clarification because I've heard okay. that it was Greek, but I've also heard that it was Syria that started the uprising because they were the ones who went in and said, we're going to, there's only one religion and one God. And that is the God that I believe in. And that is X. Then Anyone who was against this, they would have their temple torn down. And this even included the temple within the wall, correct? The the Western wall. Western wall. The, temp the temple of Solomon is what you're talking about, right? Yes. And this is where that statue comes into play. Right. So, so it wasn't until, and this is where the, the story I get confused on. Who is Judah and the Maccabees? So there was a revolt, right? And and uh, one of uh, the the father of this uh, group of uh, of re rebellious people that were uprising, um, trying to get the uh, the temple re rededicated back. I believe, if if this if I remember correctly, um, he he died and his son uh, took over. And his name uh, either was or was changed to Judah Maccabee. And that's where the story of the Maccabees, right? These are um, the folks who fought against the, um, the, the, the I, I, whether they were Syrian or Greeks, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I guess your research show some uh, some inconsistency in the story but at the very least is is a, the, the maccabees did fight back and um and won this uh rebellion and they were able to re rededicate the temple so because they're the ones that went in to clean up the temple after they forced the mm -hmm. uh people who came in and destroyed the religion and the temple they're the ones who went in and were found the ate the the oil and lit the uh, menorah to last one day but it lasted eight the maccabees i i, I the only reason i'm sticking on this is because i want to learn a little bit more about this because anyone who's watched like tv shows knows that the maccabees are something that has been said if you watch friends you remember ross the armadillo who talked about the jewish armadillo who talked about the maccabees <laughs> Are, yes, you laugh, and probably right now, if I had the rights to it, I would put that story that Ross gave to Ben, his son, about the Maccabees. Are the Maccabees held in reserve because they are the ones who took back the temple from the intruders? Um, I, I guess I should say there, there's a there's a different way of looking at this. There is the historical side of things, right? And there's much archaeology, a lot of history. Um, that has been reconstructed from archaeological finds and what have you, but the other is is the stuff of of um, his oral history, right? And in Judaism, it's a very rich history of of oral history being passed down from generation to generation. And of course, as you can imagine, stories will change, <laughs> interpretations will change, and depending on where you are in the world and in which particular branch of Judaism you belong to, the story might change, right? The names might change, but the overall message um, and, and, and the underlying theme of, of, of Hanukkah is, uh, I guess, a, a spiritual rededication of yourself, right? To, to, right? to righteousness, a rededication of yourself to a spiritual life, but also uh, remembering the sacrifices that our ancestors have made to ensure that this faith has withstood the test of ages, you know, and, and I mean, Jewish history is filled with uh, kings and queens and, and kaisers and all kinds of 
uh, political leaders and, and, and tyrants trying to wipe us off the face of the earth, but here we are. And I think telling each other these stories and remembering these kind of feats is the underlying um, fabric that holds us all together. Because now we have different, you know, sects of Judaism, you have um, different interpretations of the law and what have you. And, and the thing is, it doesn't matter which branch of Judaism you, you ascribe to. As a Jew, I can walk into any synagogue and worship because it's, it's, it's this very much a, um, a sense of family, a sense of common history, a sense of common ancestry, right? And the stories and the names might vary a little bit. But under under all of that, there is this very common theme of um, of community, right? And that's really what um, I, I think, to me at least, Hanukkah brings to um, to remember uh, for us to remember is is uh, I mean even the prayers that we do, you know, we say um, we bless uh, God for allowing us to live long enough to have reached that day, and to be able to celebrate. Uh, by lighting the candles each day of the eight days of Hanukkah. So it, it is it is an interesting way of looking at it. But historically, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure that there's uh, lots of different and varied opinions. Um, at the end of the day, it is um, a difference between the fact that in those days, the temple was the center of Judaism, right? Nowadays, uh, after the temple was destroyed and, and, and Jews were sent into exile, um, rabbinical Judaism came up, right? And so now we have temples and we have synagogues. And But back in those days, there was one place of worship and that was a temple. Everybody went to the temple. And so the, the desecration of the temple, it was a desecration of the self, right? The, the, the spirit, it was considered to be such a heinous crime. And it would have been for, for people living in those days because, again, it played such a central role in the religion and the faith and, um, you know, birth and, and death and all those different things that um, are now taking place in in, um, in, in different synagogues, uh, you know, places where you go and, and, and get buried, what have you. Um, I'm getting lost, but the whole idea is there in those days, that temple was the center of the universe, right? And the holies of holies, where the tablets of the commandments uh, were kept, the Ark of the Covenant was kept. It was a place so sacred that only the high priest could go into that specific area, right? And so you can imagine the horror that people felt when they were being disconnected from the place that occupied such a central role in, in spiritual life. I, I want to jump back to the menorah here for a second, because when the Maccabees entered the temple to start cleaning to light the flame, it lasted for eight days. Now, the question I have, what does the flame represent? What does the eternal flame represent? What does the lighting of that eight days of Hanukkah represent? Or does it represent anything? And I'm just out to lunch on this question. No, it, it does represent something. So the the menorah is is one right where where it's it's similar to this, but it has, um, I believe it's only six um, um, candles or six uh, uh, places where you put oil and burn. This one with eight uh, candles plus the the shemesh, which is the the middle one, is eight, and this one is called a Hanukkiah, right? So it's a different kind of um, it's a it's, it's a variation of the menorah. So when they went in, oh, there you are. See, that was my gift to you. What two years ago? This was our very first uh, Hanukkah <laughs> gift. So That's right. for those who are listening to this, you have to turn over to YouTube to watch this. But we'll post a video, a uh, 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 photo on our social media feeds every night of Hanukkah. So this is the Hanukkah. Yeah. Okay, that so is this is not a this is not a menorah. This is a Hanukkah. Well, it it's a Hanukkah, but it's also it, it's also called a menorah, right? But the 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 difference is um, when you look at some of the depictions of uh, of the candelabra in uh, 
in uh, in historical records, uh, I think the number is different. The number of, of okay. claims is different, right? So when they went in and re dedicated the temple, um, it was always kept uh, lit, right? And it's it's one of those things that I think um, had a, a much more significant and religious um, undertone at the time. I don't know what that is, <laughs> to be honest with you, but I know um, with respect to Hanukkah, is that you are celebrating the fact that um, in our belief, God allowed the the oil to burn a lot longer than what it was expected to. They only found enough oil to light the menorah for one day, but it stayed lit for eight days, which is how long it took to create new um, uh, holy, holy oil. And then after the eighth night, they were able to uh, um, continue keeping it lit, but that one vial lasted for eight days, which is the miracle. <laughs> I'm getting so complicated. I'm following you, though, so that's all that matters. Good. I want to talk about you with Sorry. regards to... <laughs> Did you say, oh, God? <laughs> Probably. I want to talk about you when it comes to Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. First, the first question I want to ask is this. What does Hanukkah mean to you? I, I guess it still uh, goes back to the same um, belief. It's, it's a renewal. It's a reminder of the importance of religious freedom. It's, it's the, um, a reminder that there is a very long history, a, a, a long, uh, unfortunately, um, marred with many um, really awful, awful um, chapters of, of us as a people persecution um but also of survival right like like the best of them have tried to wipe us off the face of the earth and here we are like you you'll find us in every color <laughs> in every ethnicity in pretty much every corner of the world and uh and it's it's just one of those things that when you're walking around and you see somebody else lighting a candle you know there's a family there who would welcome you, for example, to celebrate with them. Um, and uh, I, I guess it brings a sense of community. And to me, it's also a sense of family and, uh, and renewal, right? It's, it's a rededication of yourself as, as a spiritual being. At least to me, that's what it means. So for you, what's your earliest memory of Hanukkah? Well, you know what? I, I'll give you not the earliest, but the best memory of Hanukkah. And that was when I came back uh, from having spent time in Israel and having been, um, you know, reacquainted in many respects. I have learned some very new uh, different things of what I had grown up with. A lot of misconceptions um, and uh, um, perhaps miseducation, whether intentional or not. And I came back and I celebrated the first Hanukkah um, with everybody, with uh, Hanukkiah that I had brought back uh, uh, from from Israel. And um, and then I got to tell the story over again. And we, um, the kids were young, right? They were they were much younger then. And, and by kids, he's not talking about with... the dogs here, people. So for those who are listening, <laughs> he's not talking about the puppy that's in his lap right now. <laughs> the other babies um and um and it, it it was there was one picture that i i got that night it was my my mother and i uh getting ready for for hanukkah and uh and i remember there's a picture of of uh marcelo looking up at me intently right and he was so young and that picture every time i see it it just oh, gives me the chills because it, again it goes back to the same thing of uh retelling a story and keeping this tradition that has been passed down for so many generations. And that to me was the, the most memorable Hanukkah um, to date, at least. I'm sure there's gonna be better ones, but to date, that's the big, the big one. I am shocked that you did not say the very first one that you and I celebrated together, but I will let that slide. I will let that slide. <laughs> 
people he's uh, fishing for compliments and he's not gonna get them from me okay <laughs> i've learned that in the three years of what they're <laughs> what it bliss you you pride yourself on being very close to your faith and very close to your religion um how does Hanukkah play into your faith? Does it recenter you and does it allow you to? I, I, I yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause for a second, not pause, but I'm just gonna back up and ask this question in a different way. For those who are listening, you know that I do this all the time on the show. Most people would edit, but I don't edit. So in the Christian faith, mm-hmm. Christmas is about giving. It's about giving, it's about community, it's about giving back. And you're supposed to carry on that tradition and that feeling throughout the year. Most people forget about it and most of it's about give, getting uh, like Santa Claus gifts. In, ha- in, in the Jewish faith, in uh, Jewish yeah, faith, apologize if Judaism. I said that. Judaism, um, in Judaism, Hanukkah represents renewal as well. How does Hanukkah play into your day-to-day life outside of those eight days? Is there a message that you say to yourself that uh, Hanukkah was the day that we did this, this, and this, but I'm going to continue doing it into the future because that's what my faith and my religion believes, and I'm going to continue that. Um, Well, first off, I, th- I think there's a misconception that Hanukkah is the Jewish version of Christmas, and it's not. It just so happens that um, it falls around the same uh, time of the year. But as you know, even from last year, the dates have changed. It's because in Judaism, um, traditionally, um, we have followed a lunar calendar. So Hanukkah uh, falls at, at different times of the solar year, you know, uh, um, the common year. So it, it just happens to be around the same time and sometimes it even overlaps one and the other i know riri and uh and, and so it, it's created this kind of misconception that um one is interchangeable with the other or one is a um uh, i guess a way of not feeling left out you know if, if you're not celebrating christmas and it's not um that's right kids the other puppies um and uh <laughs> I can tell you, I agree with you. I uh, I can tell you that it's it's not, and it's it it's the the thing about Judaism is that we have um, throughout the year uh, many more, as you have learned, many more holidays that are celebrated in very special and unique ways that are uh, are not common, uh, at least in other religions. I I, I think Islam, uh, to be fair, has a lot of um, festivals as well. Uh, fast days of fasting and and, and and things that are very similar um, but um, from my own experience at least there's so many holidays you can pretty much pick any day of the week and there's a Jewish holiday to remind you of something um, and so Judaism to me at least is something that you live every day um, and when you're when you are um, you know lighting a, a, a Hanukkah or whether you're going into um, a tent during um, the the uh, what is it the uh, oh my god I, I I forgot the name of the holiday Sukkot. I feel yeah. like your rabbi's gonna pull <laughs> your Jewish card here I know <laughs> I told you it's not my intent to give anybody out there an aneurysm over my version of Judaism um, but uh, yeah you know and and so what do I take for it from it for the rest of the year um, well I don't put my Hanukkah away. As you know, I keep it um, in a visible place, and um, and whenever I feel I need a connection or I'm feeling um, that I need to reboot, reboost my spiritual uh, being, I will light it as well, right? So um, during Shabbat, and and so I I you know it stays with me. It is not something that's conscious, but the idea of renewal and the idea of um, perseverance and and being connected not to just your own self and your own problems but also the the things that are going around you right and uh, the community at large i guess it's what stays with me but the other thing too is um there's not a a a big um i guess focus on on gifts and gift giving right like 
you know this, and I've told you this, it, it's more traditional to make gifts or to give small things. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not this whole, let's go and wrap things up and put them on, like that's not, that's really not what it's about. It's just another token of appreciation of love and, and you know, and, um, and, and caring, but it's not uh, meant to be, um, I guess, Christmas 2.0 or whatever, right? Um, and so Isn't that's where the misconception of the economic. I want to ask about that misconception because Christmas has become commercialized as much as you think, as much as you, we might not want it to be, but it has. Uh, and I think there's a uh, understanding that Christmas is no longer Christmas. It's commercial Christmas. It's uh, businesses trying to make a profit, which is understandable. Um, I have seen, and we, we go into Michael's at Christmas time from time to time. We go into a lot of stores over the Christmas holidays and the winter breaks and the festive seasons. And it seems like more and more businesses are becoming more Hanukkah friendly, if that makes sense. Have you seen an increase in your lifetime of more uh, mention of Hanukkah in businesses of... Uh, being more uh, Hanukkah friendly within communities or in the in in the during the winter times, and like the the retail world is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, um, for sure. Like I I remember having to drive or take the bus, whatever, all the way to Glenmore Landing back in the day to find Hanukkah candles, right? So that was and like now, two years ago, said, right? Two years ago, <laughs> back in the okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And now it's here in the Northeast, you can, you can go to Michael's and you can find Hanukkah candles, you can find a menorah, you can find a little, it's still a little section, don't get me wrong, compared to everything else, but it's there. I, I think it has more to do with the fact that we are much more aware of the diversity and, um, and you know, I guess retail stores are responding to that and don't want to feel like they're um, making anyone feel left out. Um, I'm not really sure exactly why, but yeah, for sure, there's a lot more uh, access to a menorah in uh, in Northeast Calgary than I ever remember there being when I was growing up. So we are recording this on Friday. We are recording this Thursday night. I apologize. This is coming out Friday uh, Friday morning, and the first day of Hanukkah is Sunday, so the 26th. So this th Sunday. The first day of Hanukkah it takes place. Is, is that the right phrasing there? Takes place and happens is the first day of Hanukkah. Yeah, like, it's, okay. It's, um, yeah. What, what, what's the tradition? What, what is the process of celebrating Hanukkah? Because you have taken me through the process twice. You have taken me through <laughs> the eight days. Um, last year lighting like, candles yeah last year was a little bit different because during hanukkah i was going through treatments so it wasn't the best but i i did celebrate the first few days of hanukkah with you the year before that uh i don't really remember because my brain's basically mush right now we had, so we had a good hanukkah is, what is the process of celebrating hanukkah like is there like christmas you put up a christmas tree Hanukkah, do you take the, the menorah out and you light the candle and that's it? Or what is the, like, is there like a, is there like a guidebook of how to celebrate Hanukkah? Oh, like, sure. I, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, no. We have, uh, like, uh, you've seen my prayer book, right? Yep. I, um, right. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's a Siddur and it's, um, it's got um, prayers specifically for Hanukkah, but I don't know that there's a specific thing. Like when, when, when I do Passover and I go and get rid of all the bread and whatever and, and block it up in a cupboard and give you a dollar for it. <laughs> that it's a different it's a different process, right? It's a little more It's involved. Monopoly dollars, let's put that in <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> it's a little bit more involved, okay? But uh, Hanukkah is not like that. I mean, there's some traditional foods like you're supposed to eat uh, to commemorate the oil you eat oily foods right so that's where the latkes come in and which as I'm you know try for the first time this year which you promised to make me yes and the previous years you couldn't eat them because yeah. you were in treatment and you yeah. couldn't eat anything that was uh, yeah. and uh, I highly uh, oily yeah so i'm gonna try so, and do it this year let's see how well that works out but uh yeah. so um so 
for those who are play, listening and right now, the <laughs> yeah, for those who are listening right now, if you're hearing some dogs barking, that is because we thought if anyone's watching this right now, you realize that why are two husbands in two different rooms doing this via Zoom? Because we have dogs and we thought the best solution to keep them quiet during this was to separate ourselves so that way they don't complain when we're in one room together without them. As you can tell, that's not working out that well. So we do. I do apologize for that right now. But I, I want to talk about the, the the lighting, the lighting of the menorah, the first day, the second day, the third day, all the way through the day. When does it takes place at sundown or sunrise? Sunset. 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 Yeah. So mm-hmm. why is that important? With the ex- with the exception of uh, uh, the Sabbath, Shabbat, uh, Fridays, right? Because the the on Shabbat the Shabbat candles take precedence over the Hanukkah. You're not supposed to use um, the light from from these candles to read, for example, or anything like that. Like they're suppo- they're meant to um, create a spiritual space. And um, anyway, so you asked why it's done at sunset. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you read the Torah. It talks about there being day, uh, night, and then there being days. So first there was night, then God created the light and created the day. So in Judaism, our understanding is the day starts at sunset, right? And it ends with sunrise. So that's why it's uh, it's backwards. And so is it, we separate. So- we I, I we I, I jokingly we got candles this year because we ran we like we literally had enough just for like it was the Hanukkah miracle last year where we ran out at the exact <laughs> moment where we could because we ran out of candles for both uh, both mine and the, uh, my husband's uh, menorah. Um, so I, I gotta ask the question: Is like there was like Hanukkah candles, like it was like actual Hanukkah candles. Does it matter what type of candles no. you light? Like, is it like, no. it, is there like, is it like, I don't know? Um, no, 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 no. Okay. I mean, in more traditional homes, they actually use oil. And we can if we wanted to. I guess we could, we have olive oil and we have uh, uh, candle wick. Um, and so, presumably, I guess we could always, we actually, could always use oil. Let's not do that because Chris has the tendency to burn things down if that happens. So we're not going to do that. Yeah. So there's no, so like anyone, technically anyone can celebrate Hanukkah because they can just light a menorah whenever they want. But Mm -hmm. in the years past, you have said a special prayer, which you uh, have tried to teach me and I am learning. I, (laughs) I, I am picking it up as slowly as I possibly can because I am going through things right now and I'm trying to learn as much as I can. That prayer, is it a universal prayer? Like if I go to another Jewish household, yes, would they be saying the exact same prayer, but in that household? Yeah, I mean, pronunciations will, will differ. Those who have perfect Hebrew pronunciation, um, uh, those who are Yiddish speaking will have a different pronunciation of the prayer, but um, the way that it's written in Hebrew, it's pretty much, well, it's Aramaic in some respects. Um, it's still the same. And in, in Judaism, there's a there's almost like a formula to prayer, right? Um, it's uh, it, it goes with Baruch Atah Adonai, um, well, blessed are you, O Lord. And then um, the other pieces of a specific prayer come in, uh, whether you're breaking bread, where you're making Kiddush, when you're, when, when I take out the wine and, and yeah, yep. uh, on the Sabbath. Um, so all those different things, they all begin with the same, um, I guess, introduction, which is, uh, blessed are you a God, King of the universe. Um, in, in Hanuk- uh, during Hanukkah, um, you would, you would add blessed are you a Lord, uh, King of the universe who has brought me to this day or to this season. And uh, blessed are you, O Lord, who has commanded us to light the candles uh, for Hanukkah, right? And it's very similar. If, I mean, if you pay attention uh, to tomorrow Friday uh, for Shabbat, it's the same one uh, when you light the the, uh, the candles during the Sabbath, right? It's 
uh, blessed are you, o Lord, who, uh, King of the Universe, who commanded us to light the candles of the Sabbath, right? So it's Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melecha Olam Asher Kiddushon. So, so it goes, you know, has given us but the commandments. It has but it's a universal like prayer. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and and that's the thing, like it, within Judaism, like I said, there's different um, there's different sects. And I, I don't even know if you can call them that. I mean, there's definitely some very fundamental differences in both uh, worship and in some respects, um, beliefs and how the different laws are, are applied. Um, but uh, everybody shares the same the, the same belief in the same book, the Torah, right? And um, and whether you read it in English or in the original Aramaic or Hebrew, um, the prayers still remain the same. And um, you can go to any Jewish household, pretty much anywhere in the world during Hanukkah, and you will hear the same prayer. My last question before we start wrapping up here is this. What do you hope for this Hanukkah? Like, is there something that, is there a special meaning that you hope each year for the eight days? Is there something special that you try to do during that? What, what do you, what, 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 what things are you going to try to better yourself or get done or work towards this Hanukkah? Or is that um, even a thing? I don't know. It's not really, I mean, not for me anyway, but um, I'm sure that, that it is for others. What what I do think about is, um, I, again, re, reassuring myself that I am keeping um, a memory alive, right? And for um, a group, a cultural group, a religious group um, like us, we've lost so many generations people who are no longer here because of hatred and because of ignorance. And I have the privilege of being alive and being here. And I feel it's not an obligation, but I feel like a duty to remember and to keep those traditions alive and to hopefully teach um, others in my family who are non-religious, who are not even, um, um, what do you call it, where religion is not everywhere near their, their thinking, um, hopefully that they'll at least remember the, um, the passage of time and the, the lessons and the history that we share as, as, as a community. But I, I think most, most importantly than anything, though, to me, it's, again, community, it's family, and um, it's rededication of the self and the spiritual um, aspect of it is, is really what stays with me. It's not about the gifts. You know, I, I, I can tell you what lazy year when somebody's parent gave them a wallet and then a dollar into the wallet. But no, a two, uh, uh, yeah, a dollar into the wallet every day. And it was like, this is it. You know, for some people, they go out and like go and spend all kinds of money. That's not what Hanukkah is to me. Uh, it's it's a little bit more um, a symbolism, a remembrance. Last year, I remember we, we had the conversation this year where we weren't going to do that. We weren't going to do the big expenditures. We were going to do the homemade gifts and I am yep. looking forward to giving you my eight homemade gifts. If you do not like them, you know where the complaint bin is in our household, <laughs> so you can put them there. Um, oh, no, this is the returns department right here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> they, they know what to do. Um, I want to thank you for this. This has been a pleasure, as always, to sit down with my husband and chat on the record, so that way he can't say that I don't talk to him. Um, <laughs> Never. For those who are listening right now, I apologize yet again for the dogs, but this is our last show. This is our last show before I go in for my surgery. 
I know, Riri, you're upset as well. I get it. Um, I want to thank uh, you, my husband, for your support, for your dedication over the last 19 months. Um, You're going to make me cry, aren't you? Yep. I want to uh, thank you for sticking by me through my ups and downs. Um, I know it's been a challenge over the last few months. I would not wish this upon my worst enemy. I would not wish this upon anyone. But having someone who has been a rock, has been uh, there through the goods and bads, has been the best gift that I could ever receive. Um, I don't think I would be able to do this without anyone else beside, my, beside me. I, 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 we, we often joke, you and I, that uh, some days we want to strangle each other, <laughs> but I wouldn't want it any other way because I don't know what the future holds for me after December 3rd or December 2nd. I don't know what is in store for me for the next few months, few years, few days, but I know that through thick and thin, through ups and downs, you will be beside me. And I couldn't have asked for a better partner and I could not have asked for a better husband. And I could not have asked for a better city to live in because while we have complained about the healthcare system in September of getting pushed back and not knowing where we are, we are, we are in a state that we are in a state of mind that December 2nd, things are going to look up. And this Hanukkah, I want, while eight days is not nearly enough to continue on living, I want to, I want people to know that if you say a prayer each night, uh, I, 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 I'm not a religious person. I'm not a religious man at all, but if you can uh, say a prayer for me, um, please do. We are in a great unknown right now, and I'm looking uh, at the future with bright eyes and bushy tail. And I want to take a moment and say this to the people who have listened to the show for the last three seasons. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being along for the ride. I am blessed with everything that I've gotten in my life. And I, I, I'm determined to be on the other side of this in January when I come back with brand new episodes. We do have episodes airing the week after my surgery and all in January. So I will be back, but I won't be on social media a lot because my husband is probably going to rip the phone out of my hand, lock me in my bed, just so that way I can actually recover this time because I... I'm determined to beat this and I'm determined to bring back a happier go lucky Chris Brown in the new year. Um, whether I am here continuing fighting or whether I'm here a brand new man, I want you to know, and I'm speaking to the people right now that you have made me happy by you just tuning in each up each week and each day for the shows. But I want to say this is, particularly to my family. Um, I know they probably will not listen to this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh -huh. Mom, dad, Matt, Else, Cedar, extended family, I love you. Um, I thank you for everything you've done over the last 19 months. But, uh, oh, but I should also say this, Solania, thank you. Uh, Eli, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, thank you. Um, my extended family, my in-laws, thank you. Uda, thank you. Um, and to, I want to say a special thank you to three people, three people particularly right now. Michael Connolly, Deborah Drever, <laughs> Olga Barcelo. Um, you don't know how much you mean to us in this household right now. Uh, for those who don't know, when I went in for surgery back in March, 
Ricardo and I had to make a tough decision when it came to end of life. And Michael and Deborah dropped everything and they came over. So thank you. And I will leave on this note. I will promise I leave on this note before I turn it over to Ricardo for, to say his parting words. Um, my husband, my love, my everything, you have made of me a better man, a better host, a better, better partner, a angrier man with that, the amount of dogs that we have. <laughs> but you have made me so much better and I could not have asked for a better person to be on this journey with called life. And I will be with you for the rest of my life as, however long or short it is. So thank you. I love you. <laughs> you did make me cry. <clears throat> I love um, you too. Uh, do you have anything to say know, before I do the wrap up here? <laughs> Yeah, um, Hanukkah is a time of miracles and um, you have been my miracle and I am holding out for another miracle in, um, in the results of your surgery. And um, yeah, so I am... Um, um, As you can tell, I, I did not prep grateful. my husband for this at all. <laughs> But um, yeah, and, and, and equally, um, thank you for allowing me to be part of this journey with you. Um, we're not done. We have a lot more fight left in both of us. And uh, I, that's it. Uh, I, I want to, I, I should have mentioned her name beforehand because she is my sister. She is my sister from another mister. Leah Mawat. Mm -hmm. You, <laughs> anyone who knows my husband and I knows that my husband and my dog, Robin, do not like each other. Leah Malad has graciously accepted the role of caretaker <laughs> of Robin in case something goes wrong on Thursday. So Leah, if you're listening to this, please, please, please come down and get Robin if something happens. I joke, but I need to because we always leave the show on a positive note. We never want to cry because crying there's no point of crying because we have every day we have every minute with each the ones that we love and i'm going to make sure that damn well the people who in who are in my life know that i love them so ricardo i love you you have been the best you. thing that's happened to me uh my family thank you so much for all the support you've given me over the last 19 months to my friends thank you so much kellyanne i i feel like i'm missing people and i apologize right now but i did not Stephanie mclean Stephanie, oh, Stephanie, fuck. Mc Stephanie McLean for no reaching out during that time. I, I, I know I shouldn't swear, but I, I need to make sure that I say all my sincere thank yous. Stephanie McLean, um, you, 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 even in BC, you have made a massive difference in my life. Uh, you and I have, we met once at Sherlock's in Edmonton, <laughs> and it was the greatest squished in uh, lunch I've ever had with someone. So thank you so much. Kellyanne, thank That's you so right. much. That's right. Yes. <laughs> that was right the day of our engagement. The, the day right. after our engagement, we I, we went out right. and you were like, here's my fiance. And she went, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she knew already. Oh, then she yeah. went into the whole. <laughs> That's true. We <laughs> won't go into that whole <laughs> the regular world. But I want to thank you. And to the people of Calgary who have tuned into the show, who have tuned in, who have listened, to the uh, people who have reached out with well wishes, thank you so much. Um, from everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah. Uh, Sunday uh, at sunset, uh, we will be celebrating. We will be lighting the menorah. We will be posting it on social media because in the world of uh, social media, if it doesn't post on social media, it did not happen. So we'll be there. Um, and my last parting words is this. We will be off next week. We have uh, 10 days of shows starting on uh, December 7th, running uh, September 6th running for two weeks 
because we have great guests and we're going to end this season off well. We're going to take a few weeks off in uh, December and January and we will be back on January 10th, January 2nd. We have some big announcements for season four because, you know, as much as I'm going to be recovering, I have pre-recorded a lot of things to be posted for a while. So you'll be seeing some scheduled posts coming out for social media and my husband probably as well. Um, he will let everyone know the status of my surgery uh, at an appropriate time. He'll let my family know first, but uh, please stay tuned to the Cross Border Interview Podcast website and social media pages because we will give you an update on my surgery and on my uh, recovery when that when the time is appropriate. Um, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your Friday. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your weekend. Keep talking and re- remember remember, 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 life is short. Don't fret the small things. Thank you so much, Ricardo, for doing this. Bye, everyone. I love you. Oh no, Chris is doing a post uh, a mid credit scene or a post credit scene just like they do in Marvel. Please don't sue me, Disney. Um, I want to take this moment and uh, thank a few other people and just uh, just talk to you for, for a few seconds. So just you, me, no one else in the room, not my husband, just you and me. The reason I say that is because sometimes emotions get the best of you when you're talking to somebody else that you love and you admire and you couldn't imagine your life without. So I want to say this. I am so happy that I've gotten to know some people who have tuned into the show. I'm so happy that I've gotten to know some great people on the show. I'm so happy that I've been able to grow friendships, grow my circle, grow who I am as a person. I am so, so happy. This show has been a godsend. The last 20 months, as you can imagine, have been a shit show for me. I, there are days where I struggle to get out of bed. There are days when I struggle to do anything. And I needed something to continue on. After getting fired from my job, for going to the hospital too many times, for my appointments, for cancer, I didn't know where to turn. So I turned to my show because I needed an outlet to tell people's story, but also go on and move forward as I am. I I couldn't have done this show without the t- listeners who tune in because your feedback does actually help me because I know that I'm doing good if you guys send in good comments. Sometimes I know when I'm doing bad when you send in bad comments, which seems to be a little bit more than the good comments, but that's here nor there. There's a few other people that I wanted a uh, special shout out to because... I, I, I don't want them to think that what they've done for me in the last 20 months has gone unnoticed. Um, I want to start with one person in particular. She has been my sparring partner when it comes to politics. She has been my uh, conservative to my liberal Uh, Jennifer Sanford, you have made me a better man, a better person, and a better host. You come on this show every month and you hold me to account. You will challenge me on ideas that I thought I knew and were ingrained in my head. And I thank you for doing that because you have made me think outside the box in a more positive way. So thank you so much for that. Michael Nichols Pate our entertainment reporter, the man in Hollywood, technically Broadway now, but Michael Nichols Pate, you, you're hilarious. You have been 
an epic friend during times when I thought making friends was hard. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being there. Thank you for taking my text messages at 8 o'clock my time, 10 o'clock your time. Thank you for being who you are because you, you've made this journey a little bit easier to be able to play Animal Crossing with you, to be able to play Pokemon with you, and just not have to have that conversation about what cancer is and how I'm feeling each day because sometimes you just want to just want to shoot the shit and sometimes you just want to play Pokemon and catch Pikachu. Got to catch them all. Um, Kelly and McNeil, um, thank you so much for being on the show so many times without uh, any prompt to. You, you, you will say yes at the drop of a hat, so thank you so much for doing that. Your laugh, your friendship has been one of the greatest friendships I have made in my life. I would never have imagined I would love someone who loves Sidney Crosby so much. But you do you, girl. You continue being the best person you are because uh, you have made me laugh in dark times. You have made me cry during hard times. But you have made this journey a little bit easier as well. Um, I want to go back to Ontario for a second because I, I want to remember the people who have helped me back there. <laughs> My mother, my father, my brother, my sister-in-law, thank you so much. Um, I know we don't talk as much as we should, but your support during the last 20 months has been fantastic. and I could not ask for a better family to go through this with. Yes, we have our ups and downs, but what family does it? Uh, we celebrate Festivus while other people celebrate Christmas. So thank you so much for being there for me and being with me during this time. Um, I, I wanna, I, I, I wanna, I, I jokingly talked about her during the uh, interview, but I wanna make special reference to someone who has made a more impactful presence in my life and has made me better each and every day, and that is Leah Mawat. I know I'm going to cry about this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to get through this and then sob my eyes out afterwards. Leah, you... You're amazing. You, you fight. You challenge. You call bullshit when bullshit needs to be called. You are not a friend of mine. You're more than a friend. You're family. And when I moved out west, I didn't have family. I didn't have anyone to rely on or anyone to talk to. But one summer day, you and I had a sit-down conversation in the lunchroom in Slave Lake where we sparked a friendship that would end all friendships because no one would know what exactly it meant. And you and I have been on a journey that 600 kilometers couldn't even be far enough because... You and I will always be friends. We will always be there for you. And you call me, I will be there at the drop of a hat. I call you, you'll be there at the drop of a hat. You came down during the middle of a pandemic to see me on my birthday of all, of all, the, of no less. And you, you, you made that trip without any hesitation, without any re reservations. You just said, I'm going to do it. And that's the true sign of not a friend, but of a family member. You, there are moments right now in my life where I don't know. I, 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 I've prided myself all my life on being able to know what the next step is. What next week holds, what next month holds, what next year holds, what next decade holds. This is the first time in my life where I don't know. 
And now you might say, well, you always don't know because you always learn. That's true. But I can tell you that I have put together something I am proud of. I have never been more proud of things that I've been able to accomplish on this show. You, you, the viewers, the listeners who have tuned in every day, every week, every month, every year for the last three years, don't know what it means to me to be able to showcase this amazing show and have you listen to it. I've never been one to brag, to self-promote, and you have made it easy to not have to do that because you keep on tuning in. Even though I don't feel like people should be listening, you want to listen to me. You want to listen to me have a conversation between two people because, honestly, that's all I'm doing. But next Thursday, I don't know. I don't know what happens Friday. I don't know what happens next weekend. I want to believe that everything is going to turn out right. I I believe everything's going to turn out right. I've never prayed in my life since I've moved out west, but I'm going to say this. If there is a higher power out there right now watching this, watching over me, watching over the surgeon, guide his hands to remove this. This has been the worst nightmare in my life, and I would not have wished it upon my worst enemy. We we fret about the small things in our life. Oh, a nail broke. Oh, I have to wear a mask. I struggle. I struggle not being able to know what next weekend holds. And I hope, I hope, 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 hope that when I return in the new year, that I'm better for it. That I will have less seizures. My hand won't be freezing up. I won't be having spurts of memory loss and I will be able to see out of my left eye again but if that doesn't happen and I should never say this but if that doesn't happen I want you to know this and this is for everyone Life is what you make of it. If you want to be angry, if you want to be cranky, if you want to sit behind a computer screen and complain on social media for the rest of your life, go for it. But if you want to find joy, if you want to find purpose, if you want to find happiness, it's there. The last 20 months, I have been in a dark place. A bad place. I've tried to stay positive, but sometimes you can't. And I I appreciate everyone who has reached out in support and given their condolences and talked to me when they didn't have to. But sometimes you just have to be in a dark place so back to my original statement go find something go find something that brings you joy that brings you happiness that brings you pleasure and don't care what other people think and don't care why people need to take you down I am Living day to day in a world that I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what next weekend holds. If I'm to leave this earth, I hope the, 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 the footprints that I've left reverberate 
throughout time, throughout democracy, throughout whatever. I just hope that you 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 search for something. I have never been someone to say negative things openly to people, to anyone. I've said things behind people's back and I'm ashamed for that. I just hope, 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 hope we can stop doing that. Get out from behind the Twitter handle and go have a conversation. Yet again, we can't do it during a pandemic. And for those who want to send in negative comments, do it. Don't care. I'm going to file them in the trash. But get out from behind the camera and go explore. Go find something that you enjoy. Do it because you enjoy it. Don't do it because someone believes you should do it. Do it because you enjoy it. And if it, if someone says boo about it, screw them. I had people tell me I should stop this show. Because I'm not a good host. I'm not X, Y, and Z. Don't tune in. I'm, I'm going in for a surgery that is going to alter my state of mind my opinions, my whole body. And I don't care what people think anymore. Oh my God. I don't care. Well, you just heard an epiphany, guys. I don't care anymore. I've always... Oh my God, I've literally always rushed after and I've always chased after the, the views, the likes, the counters, the, the blue check mark. At the end of the day, what the hell does it matter? If that brings me joy, why the, what the hell is wrong with my life? I'm so happy I did this now. Fuck. I want to... I, I want to say this in closing because we are 15 minutes in and I want to make sure I say this. Don't care what other people think. If it brings you happiness, if it brings you joy, if it brings you pleasure, do it for yourself. Do it for the reasons why you want to do it. If the people around you do not support you, they weren't your friends or family to begin with. Friends and family will support you throughout anything. And my family have supported me throughout this last 20 months, and they will be there to support me after Thursday surgery. My husband has been the rock of my life over the last 20 months. I have been the ups and downs and downs and outs. And I can tell you that I, I would never have done this without him because he has cared. He has fostered my uh, passions, and I have done the same for him. So the people who have told me to stop the show... Rest, relax. Don't tune in again. Fuck. I am... I'm going in for surgery on December 3rd. I'm just going to pull up a calendar here because I want to make sure that I have the correct information. December, December 2nd, I go in for my surgery. December 3rd, we have an episode coming out for International Day of Persons with Disabilities with Kellyanne McNeil. Please tune in for that. And then next week, the 6th to the 10th, we have great episodes every single day. We have a mix of episodes. Please tune in. The 13th and 14th, we have two great politicians, one former, one current serving in as the Alberta MLA for Chestermere Strathmore. Leela here is on the show. Then on the 14th, we have former retired senator or sen retired senator, not former retired because that means he'd be your senator, but retired senator Mike Duffy on the show. Then we have the 15th, 16th, 17th, where we have great episodes as well. And then on the 29th, we'll be releasing another episode where we'll be talking with our panel of lookbacks. And then we're off for two weeks. And then so January 10th, January 10th, we are back with two full weeks of great interviews. So this is this this is the challenge. This is the joke now. If we do not have episodes on the 24th, that means I'm still in recovery. 
that's still, that means I'm still recovering from my surgery and I've got a lot of processing to go through. So we might not be back after the 21st of January. But if we're back on the 24th, that means I'm, I'm recovered and I'm doing well and I'm doing some interviews and I'm not working too hard, but I'm putting out new content. So the 24th is the day where you should know if I'm back or not. I'm going to be off social media for a about a month because I'm going to take a hiatus. I'm just not going to post. I'm just going to step away. Everything's pre-recorded and they're already scheduled to go out. So I want to thank everyone. I want to, oh my God, I, I'm still impressed that I had the epiphany that I don't care anymore. I thought I cared and I truly thought I cared. I thought that I needed a thousand followers on Twitter. I needed a thousand followers on Facebook. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. I'm not chasing fame. I'm chasing pleasure. And this brings me pleasure. So for everyone here at the Crossword Interview Podcast, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. I will be back to uh, uh, next Friday with another episode. I won't be live. Uh, it will be pre-recorded in November. The next month will be pre-recorded interviews in November. So please, please, please have yourself an excellent rest of your day. Happy Hanukkah once again. And we will be back on next Friday, December 3rd. Talk to you guys later. And if not... I love you guys. I love you. And I could not have asked for a better audience. Thanks so much, guys.